we we actually encourage managers and leaders to practice uh, active listening when interacting with our mm-hmm. staff. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of People Led Show by Infido. My name is Pawan Rochwani and I'm hosting People Leaders and CHROs from the Southeast Asia region. Um I know I've it's the same host but just with the classes. Uh <laughs> and I hope you continue to shower the same love that you've been doing to the past few episodes even if I have changed my look a little bit. But uh, in this episode I have the opportunity to interview Kirk who is the country director of um people function at Air Asia Philippines and um we talked a lot about how the aviation industry in general is very demanding in terms of the schedule um the way that it operates and uh, what are certain challenges that can come across with respect to work life balance of your um, employees and at the same time also as an hr leader and uh, very interestingly when i asked him about what do you do outside of work and when you are not um working and when you are not thinking about work he gave me a very interesting answer which talks a lot about um the industry in general and i'm glad that we were able to touch about um multiple topics and um, he has almost two decades or maybe more than that experience um as a people leader and he has previously been in manufacturing healthcare hospitality and even in the bpo industry so it's going to be an interesting conversation i hope you all enjoy this as much as you have enjoyed our previous episode um once again if you have any suggestions for us to improve upon the next episode or if you want to if you want us to interview somebody specifically please feel free to comment their names and we will try our best to host them on the show um but i hope you enjoyed this and this conversation was pre recorded so some of the context might not be um exactly uh when you're viewing this so i hope you enjoy it thank you so much kark for giving us your time i'm so happy hosting you i i know um we have been going back and forth about uh when <laughs> to do this but i'm so glad that we are doing this today so thank you so much for giving us your time Yeah, thanks to Pawan and thank you for being so patient. <laughs> <laughs> Super. You know, I I start all my um uh, episodes with asking all the CHROs and uh, the people leaders that um what is something that you do outside of work because I know this conversation is going to become a lot about your work. Uh but to begin with what is something that you do outside of work? What are you doing on the weekends or just the time when you're not working? Mm. Uh if well Pawan if the question pertains to uh when I am not working well I really don't know because I am always working. <laughs> well from time to time I've been receiving a lot of uh uh chats and then emails and then I need to to respond and need to reply. Well anyway, getting aside, uh, I'm more of a uh, uh home body so i'd rather stay at home you know uh netflixing youtube in sleeping yeah. <laughs> i need of sleep <laughs> sure. yeah so that's uh, basically outside of work super okay and um getting into now with respect to work what are let's say the top two dilemmas or challenges that you currently face as the country head of people at uh, air asia philippines uh two dilemmas as the country head okay number one uh i would say work life balance hmm yes as as an hr professional you know we are tasked uh with finding effective strategies to support employees in achieving work life balance yeah. it includes addressing issues like uh burnout yeah. uh isolation and uh, difficulties in separating work and the uh, personal time and then yeah. the other one uh although it has been uh it's been promoted 
by majority of the companies, the yeah. DEI, and yeah. diversity, equity, and the uh, inclusion. Yeah. Um, well, I'm seeing this in terms of achieving the meaningful progress in DEI initiatives because there are still various factors uh, such as unconscious biases, uh, systematic barriers, and of course, some some of uh, the employees would always resist to change, yeah. you know? Yeah, so I, I think we need to navigate uh, complex issues regarding to mm. some of the aspects in, in the human resources like recruitment, uh, retention uh, and uh, promotion practices to create a more diverse and uh, inclusive workforce. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we started on the uh, DEI topic because I know diversity is crucial for innovation and um, specifically within the airline industry. Um, are there any specific measures that you are taking to um, you know, transform and ensure uh, diversity and equity and inclusion? Like, is there something you specifically like are aiming um, as a policy or as as like an initiative uh, at AirAsia? I, I, I think the most important uh, thing is to listen and learn. Okay, so in breaking down barriers, uh, by listening to others and learn from their experiences, that's uh, very important. So I think we need to, to try to understand their perspective and what they are going through. Okay, so and then learn. And then number two, uh, being open-minded. It is really important to keep an open mind because, uh, and be willing to learn and grow. So uh, how do you say this? Perhaps don't be afraid to challenge your own assumptions and beliefs. Yeah. 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 And then respect differences. We really need to, to uh, keep this in mind and then speak up. So if you see something that's not right, don't be afraid to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like very valid. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually need to use our voice to advocate for, well, for, for yourself and for others. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing that we need to do is to take action. Yeah. Right. So uh, it means standing up for yourself and uh, for others as well, or taking steps to make, well, the 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 organize the organization inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Uh, very valid point. Actually, listen and learn, and you know. Uh, voice out and all these things definitely are like very very crucial and moving on to uh, my next topic and this is something that I've been scratching my head about because um, the airline industry everything is so much on a tight schedule right and uh, it has very demanding schedule actually I would I would rather say so how do you prioritize and promote employee well-being and is there again something specific programs or initiatives um, that you have taken for like overall health and satisfaction of the workforce because um, I'm sure at least people who are on the on the ground they it's very demanding work schedule for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, people who are in the offices as well um, so just like curious about um, because we also spoke about work-life balance um so what what is something some initiative or programs that um you have to take care of this yeah so on a quarterly basis we have this uh, health and wellness uh activity so we we have a lot of booth here uh some are giving massages all of those or or uh seminars regarding on, on how to keep yourself uh healthy body healthy mm. uh how to maintain uh, work-life balance, blah, blah, blah. So it's on a quarterly uh, basis. And uh, we also include uh, programs for for mental health. Mm. Yeah. And then another thing, we also promote workplace uh, safety 
we because we need to ensure that the working uh, environment is safe mm. and uh, how do you uh, how do you call it conducive to employee well being. Mm. Okay, and we also have a regular uh, recognition. Yeah, recognition and appreciation, specifically for for cabin crew. So, uh, they have this uh, incentive program. I, I I think they call it uh, change the game, right? So they incentivize and they they recognize a uh, hardworking cabin crew. Yeah. So basically, the the top sellers of the month. Yeah. yeah. So there is a corresponding uh, cash incentive. Okay. And then we also uh, we also take uh no we also have a lot of uh, training and uh, development uh uh programs yeah yeah we we have the Air Asia Academy and also we have uh the talent team in uh, people and culture and yeah. um. I think number one is that we have a very supportive uh, leadership. Mm. If you happen to know uh, Tony Fernandez, he is really supportive and uh, he's actually our idol mm. in Asia. Yeah. And uh, on a regular basis, we also conduct feedback and uh, surveys. Got it. Got it. We'll we'll talk about feedback and surveys um uh, a little later in this conversation. But mm-hmm. the thing that um I wanted to you know talk about was um during COVID, right? Like there was a lot of unpredictability um across the aviation industry, and um I think everybody had their own like crisis management um and support that they were giving to their employees during that time. But um, I remember at at one given point when the rest of the world was still not outside, but but the aviation industry had already started. People were traveling because obviously um, mm-hmm. certain necessary travels had to be done. Um, so across that unpredictability, how did you um, like manage that crisis? Is maybe we can talk about it a um, little bit for a for a few seconds or a minute. Um, to just like tell us about how did you manage that? Yeah, when when COVID hit, well, the world actually stopped, right? And it's something new, and yeah. I'm not really familiar uh, what to do during this lockdown, blah blah blah. So basically, what we need, what what we did, uh, we may we made sure that there is a clear communication. Mm. We provide a uh, regular and uh, transparent communication to employees about the impact of uh, COVID nineteen uh, in our industry, in the airline industry, and also uh, organizational changes, uh, safety protocols, the available resources, blah blah blah. Yeah. And then, uh, we always make sure that all communication channels are accessible reliable and uh very responsive to employees uh, questions and concerns mm. uh safety measures in terms of uh, safety measures we implemented vigorous safety measures to protect uh our employees for a possible exposure to covid-19 in the workplace mm. uh we provide ppes protective uh, personal equipment and then we enforce, you know, physical distancing. Mm. Yeah. So distancing, and then we enhance uh, cleaning and uh, disinfection protocols as well. And then our regular health screenings. Yeah. When when we started reporting back for work, sometime in June or July 2020, uh, mm. on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. We do uh uh what's what's this? Uh, my god, that's that's like so much in the past I'm not able to remember it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the but the COVID test, uh, like uh yeah, yeah. the COVID test, yeah. Correct, yeah. They saw something, blah blah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we also implemented uh flexible work arrangements. 
Okay, so we have the remote uh, work, flexible hours, and uh, we also have temporary uh, temporary leave options to accommodate uh, employees' individual circumstances and concerns. And then uh, mental health resources as well, right? mm-hmm. because we, we, we also need to recognize the psychological impact of the crisis, of this crisis yeah. on employees. And uh, we also provided mental health hotlines. We actually have this uh, all-star peer support. Mm-hmm. So there is this channel wherein if you're, uh, if you feel something about yourself, if you feel sad, or if you feel that you're yeah. uh, uh, emotionally challenged like that. So there are all stars. So we call ourselves all stars. So yeah. there are uh, dedicated staff yeah. who who uh, who's willing to listen and yeah. give advice. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we also had a lot of employee engagement uh, initiatives. So we we had uh, karaoke night. So it's mm. every Monday. Mm. Yeah, so we encourage employees to join the karaoke night. So we play songs and then everyone is everyone singing, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, in India, that test is called RT-PCR. I'm not sure if it's the same in the Philippines or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. RTPCR, but but there's another one. The one <laughs> I also cannot remember. I, I feel like it's so back in the past. Uh, <laughs> that. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think um, for me as well during the COVID time, right? Like um, that's when remote antigen. Was, antigen, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was I was just saying that during COVID, that was the first time when the possibility of remote work like came into picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody was installing Zoom or you know getting familiar yes. with screen sharing, Google Meet, and all of those things. And um, my biggest challenge at that time was how to um, you know make the entire workforce remote ready um, because nobody had worked in a remote setup we in fact had our pcs in the office um so it was so difficult back then to of course purchase new softwares um mm-hmm. some people were living in a huge family so for them attending meetings uh from their living room was becoming difficult and all of those so many new things um so i, I remember it's actually tiring so yeah. you, uh, no, you're working and at the same time you're also doing household chores. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, especially in India, because the population is huge, right? So um, it, it was newer challenges that nobody had like uh, really thought about. But yes, I'm I'm glad that's away now from the world. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we we did touch upon and talk about um employee surveys and making employees feel heard um and newer technologies of course have um started coming up and um how how do you currently like we did talk about this that you use google uh suite uh-huh. um but how do you apart from these surveys um do you have like one on ones with the managers or employees how exactly is that employee listening uh, really happening uh, at AirAsia? Okay. Uh, number one, uh, I call it active listening. Right? Mm-hmm. So the CEO and uh, I, we, we actually encourage managers and leaders to practice uh, active listening when interacting with uh, mm-hmm. staff, with employees. Uh, they need to focus on what the staff is uh, saying or when they ask, uh, asking clar- clarifying questions and, uh, and the likes. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have, well, the office is actually like uh, a one huge uh, office and we don't have uh, rooms. So even the CEO, you, you can actually uh, approach him. 
Okay. Um, in 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 this in this way, I I, I think uh, Air Asia is very successful in uh, making employees feel comfortable approaching managers, giving feedback, concerns, and uh, suggestions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. is this actually ensure? Uh, everyone that managers are accessible, approachable, and uh, employees know that uh, their vo- their their voice, their opinions, uh, they, I mean, they can actually voice out their opinions yeah. without uh, fear. Yeah, so that's one good thing that I really love about Air Asia. Yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm. F- I'm finding your office really interesting. Like the CEO does, like is very approachable. There are cotton mm. massage happening, so uh, all those things. So but you don't need to to uh, make a schedule with the CEO if you want to talk to him, oh, or wow. if you want to talk to HR, you don't need to. Or oh, can I can I can I talk to you uh, at one PM? So as long as we're available, as long as we're not doing anything or we're not really busy, you can actually approach us. Wow, that's that's really interesting. Um, yes, I am. I'm sure a lot of people who are going to listen to this and watch this. They they might start implementing this. Um, but you know, one one more question because your workforce is most of the times on the move, especially people who are on the ground and they have different shifts. Um, so how does your, um, the, the people team, the HR team foster that sense of belonging or that connection with the organization, um, especially with the roles that involve a lot of like extensive travel, like the cabin crew, the pilots, um, Mm. and also the folks on the ground. So how... Do you have certain other metrics that you follow? Um, and I'm going to club my two questions here together. Um, do you follow separate metrics for people who are on the move and separate metrics for people, let's say, who are in the marketing team or uh, people who are like in the office uh, working out of Manila or any of these other locations that you have? A simpler version would be... Um, so let's say your employee engagement metrics uh, mm-hmm. are different for let's say people who are on the move, like the cabin crew um, and people who are at the airport, and are they different for people who work out of your office? Um, because of course, like that extensive travel probably um, creates a barrier sometimes with engagement. Yes. Uh- Technically, they have different uh, metrics and KPIs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like for cabin crew, uh, and then also for pilots, and then for marketing. Marketing sales and marketing are actually based on uh, sales, right? Yeah. In the commercial yeah. side, and then for for cabin crew, pilots, engineers, uh, ground staff. Of course, they are on the operation side, so. Technically, they have uh, different KPIs. But uh, if you're uh, asking me, uh, the key metrics that uh, we we think are insightful or uh, to check the performance yeah. uh, of, of the company or the organization, um, hmm. Perhaps uh, we need to do regular employee engagement survey scores. Yeah. So in there, uh, we can measure their level of satisfaction, engagement, as well as uh, loyalty. Yeah. yeah. If you're fa- if you're familiar with uh, ENPS, yeah, yeah, employee net promote. Right. score yeah so also that and then one thing that uh as HR professionals need to also take a look at is the turnover rate the retention rate absenteeism rate mm. and also the employee 
uh, well-being metrics and the like. Got it. And um, what I have discussed uh, earlier, we have this uh, social media platform, right? Uh, workplace. Yeah. Uh, by, uh, Facebook. So in there, we have uh, three groups. So we have the announcements, the happenings, and the socials. So for the announcements, we announce what's happening in the organization, what's yeah. new. Then yeah. for the happenings, uh, say, for example, we have an employee, uh, we have a wellness program, or we have someone to, to uh, we have a speaker that's, are going to inform us about uh, financial well-being, emotional well-being. And then for the socials, you can just uh, post anything. It's like, yeah. a, it's like Facebook or yeah. Instagram. You just post your photo, yada da, and all those. Got it. Okay. Um, my last few set of questions. Uh, um, we've talked a lot about work in general. Um, mm-hmm. But my last few set of questions, and this is more from a futuristic uh, kind of an, or maybe let's say a philosophical aspect as well. Um, what What do you think? How is the people management um, or the HR function going to change in the coming few years? Um, I know a lot of now CHROs are becoming, um, I would say, technology first. With, with, let's say, AI coming in and all of mm-hmm. that. What do you think? Um, how is the future of the HR function going to look like in the coming few years? Hmm. In talking about AI, so we have this uh, recruitment uh, platform. So it automatically... Uh, what do you call this? Screen automatically screens uh, the candidates, and then uh, yeah, I, I think AI is a very helpful uh, tool. Yeah. So this one can literally operate H- some of the HR functions. I think uh, efficiently. Right. However, there's there's still well, I think there's still a need for human interaction mm. uh, there has to be heart mm. the processes right but uh yeah if if i think if this ai thing continue to evolve mm. Mm, i hope the impact on the industry would be well, we're expecting to grow more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it will drive more innovation and uh, transformation yeah. in the industry. Got it. I think, um, yeah, we should keep the heart also. Yes. Mm. Within all the technology and AI that's been going around. Um, okay, here's my last question. And this is also not, uh, this is also, let's say, how we started the beginning with what you do outside of work. Uh, this is also something uh, I would say per- interpersonal. If you could go back to your 20-year-old uh, person, what what is, let's say, a piece of advice that you would uh, want to give to your 20 year old self <laughs> um, mm. I think I would encourage my younger self to take more risks and mm. then uh, pursue ambitious goals and not be afraid to step outside of my comfort zone mm. I, I, I think I would emphasize uh, the importance of resilience, perseverance, and uh, growth mindset in overcoming setbacks and uh, turning failures into valuable lessons. Because when I was still young, I am really afraid or I hate failures. Mm. Yeah, so I think that would that that would be my my pieces of advice yes, yeah. for my young. 
that's great i think uh, lovely thank you so much kar for giving us your time i um i i, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, right from the beginning when where you talked about how sleep is so important for you and now uh, yes this is it of you my advice yeah <laughs> <laughs> we talked a lot about uh, work, of course, and technology, and how the future of people function is also going to be. Um, I loved how you um, really answered all my curiosity about the aviation industry because um, I, I some I, I really understand it has a very demanding work schedules and everything is like running on a timeline. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank part. you too, Pawan. Yeah, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Me too.